welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the second and final video in IB Chemistry topic 15, Energetics, where we will be looking at spontaneity, entropy and Gibbs free energy. Our previous topic 5 and 15 videos have introduced many types of enthalpy changes. But what do these all tell us about a reaction? Well, they indicate how likely they are to occur, known as their spontaneity. A spontaneous reaction is a reaction which occurs without outside intervention, i.e. no input of energy. These reactions can be both exo and endothermic, although typically we think of exothermic examples. However, spontaneity cannot be determined from enthalpy alone, Instead, we often look at it in combination with entropy. Entropy is a measure of distribution of available energy among particles, measured in joules per kelvin per mole. It is also colloquially known as a measure of the disorder of energy. A greater distribution of energy means a higher entropy or disorder. Just like with enthalpy, we can measure the change in entropy, known as standard entropy change, denoted by delta S. But how do we determine it? Well, we can create a hierarchy and state that the entropy in a gas is greater than a liquid, which is greater than a solid. Therefore, any reaction in which there is a production of a species higher up this hierarchy, there will be an increase in entropy. Similarly, production of a species lower down this hierarchy would cause a decrease in entropy. For example, NH4Cl solid goes to NH3 gas plus HCl gas. Here we can see that we have the conversion of a solid to form two gases, which moves up the hierarchy, and therefore there is an increase in entropy, so delta S is positive. But what about when the reaction does not involve a change of state? Well, in these situations we simply count the number of moles on either side and base our answer off this. Commonly we do this when species are in the gaseous state. For example, C2H4 gas plus H2 gas goes to C2H6 gas. We can see there are two moles of gas on the left hand side of the equation and one mole on the right. Thus there has been a reduction in the number of moles of gas and so there must be a reduction in the entropy. Therefore we would say that delta S for this reaction is negative. However, for your IB chemistry higher level exam you can sometimes be asked to use values to calculate entropy change. To do so, we yet again use the formula total entropy change equals total entropy of products subtract total entropy of reactants. Let's look at an example question. Using the information in the table, calculate delta S for the following reaction. The total enthalpy of the products is C2H6, which gives 230. The total enthalpy of the reactants is C2H2, plus 2 times H2, which gives 462.2. Thus, products subtract reactants, which gives negative 232.2 joules per kelvin per mole. So, you can now determine entropy, but why is this useful? Well, a reaction with an increase in entropy will lead to a more uniform distribution of energy within this reaction. The entropy of a reaction, i.e. system, is related to its surroundings by the following equation. Delta S of universe equals delta S of surroundings plus delta S of system. Using this formula, we can therefore say that if the change in entropy for the universe is positive, the reaction is spontaneous. But if negative, the reaction is non-spontaneous. By extension, if the change in entropy for the universe is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Equilibrium is a concept that will be explored in greater depth in our IB Chemistry Topics 7 and 17 video series. However, to determine if a reaction is spontaneous for the chemistry exam, you should focus not on entropy of the universe, but on the change in Gibbs free energy. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.